totally stoked about today's episode, and for a number of reasons. Number one, I get to interview one of my good friends, Jenny Bellinger, and number two, she's another network marketing coach that totally believes in taking the skills of what you learned when you were building and bringing it to the marketplace to help others achieve. And this episode is jam-packed with just nuggets of information and literally gold as far as how to build your business. So I hope you enjoy. Welcome to the Network Marketing Made Simple podcast. I am your host, Scott Aaron, and each and every week, I'm going to come to you with short, simple, and powerful tactics of how you can grow your network marketing business, brand, bank account, and impact on those around you. And just remember, network marketing is not easy, but it can be made easy with simple steps to create the success that you truly deserve. So Jenny, welcome to today's episode. So grateful to have you on here. Obviously, being a guest on yours was was such an honor and I feel that we're so connected on so many levels and you know, we were talking in depth uh, in the pre-show and you know, for a lot of my listeners that aren't familiar with you and you know, who you are and and how you got to doing the coaching and everything that you're doing now, let's go back before we go forward, because we have a similar background in network marketing and now coaching, what was, what was that moment for you where you had that entrepreneurial spark lit, where you realized that network marketing could be that vehicle for you to build your business? Well, I, I was someone who, just to give you some background on me, I was a teacher for a number of years, middle school science teacher, stay-at-home mom, who was introduced to an opportunity. Now, I had been a professional hostess before that. I was the party girl. I was the one who would have all of the parties. And so everyone, like every every other month or so, my friends all knew they were coming to a party at Jenny's house. It was, are we going to play with makeup? Are we going to be cooking? Are we going to be doing, you know, whatever it was, whatever company it was that I, I was, um, um, I wasn't working for them, but I had a friend who was doing that. So I was helping them out by being a hostess. Right. And every one of them tried to recruit me. And I was like, no, I'm not hauling 400 pounds of kitchen stuff in and out of somebody else's house. I hate doing dishes at my house. Why would I do dishes at yours? That's stupid. <laughs> you know? So I got, I got introduced to a jewelry company. And at the time I was a stay at home mom who wore yoga pants, tank tops, had my hair in a ponytail all the time and, um, never did makeup, never got dressed up. So I was really feeling kind of yuck at the time about myself. And I saw all this jewelry and I, I saw this amazing opportunity at the time because it was a, it was a company that had been around for 50 plus years at the time. And, but it was new to the area. So it was a ground floor opportunity with the history of a company that had been around forever. So I didn't have to worry about them going anywhere. They had the, the training set up. They had the onboarding set up, everything. It was like the perfect storm for me. And I thought, well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a year into this. Let's see what Jenny can do in a year. Because I was a very ADD. And so everyone was like, yeah, right. Let's see how this goes. Well, a year later, I had promoted twice, earned three trips, and <laughs> had made a crap ton of money. And, and people were like, oh, oh, so you're going to do this. And I was like, oh, yeah, no, you, you, did, did you not understand that when I said I'm doing this? <laughs> so I started, it, for me, it was almost immediate um, because I had a really great mentor who showed me the opportunity, showed me the system and said, if you just do this, this, and this you're, you're good to go. So everything she told me to do, I did. And I'd come back and, and she'd go, Oh, you did it. Okay, great. Um, do this. <laughs> and she just kept grooming me through the process. And then I realized over the five, six, seven years that I was in business, there were not a lot of people who had someone like that guiding them through their business. Cause well, network marketing is an amazing opportunity. It, it grants flexibility of time and money. It gives financial freedom, time freedom, all those things that we love. 
But it also, one of the downsides is that you're at the mercy of whoever brings you into the business. And if they aren't a great leader, if they don't know how to teach you how to do it, because they're just learning how to do it themselves, you, you're not going to have the support you need. And so I was looking around, seeing all these people coming and going and coming and going in and out of the business going, this is not hard. Just freaking do what she said. Like, <laughs> why aren't you just doing it? And I realized it was people were not taking advantage of the free coaching and training that came with this business. That's all it was. And so I said, well, okay, well then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go be that mentor that I had, but people are going to have to pay me for it because I'm going to be the upline they wish they had. And that's really what I hear most often from my clients is, oh my God, that's so great. I, I wish my leader would say that. Well, she doesn't. And that's why you're here with me. <laughs> so let's, let's talk about the word leader. Because mm -hmm. it's, 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 a, it's a gray area word. It really is. So a lot of people, when they hear leader, they think manager right? Because that's what we're used to seeing out in corporate everyday, quote unquote, traditional business world, right? Um, and so I see leader as somebody who is not ahead of the pack, who is not behind the pack, but in the pack, bringing every, everyone along with them, right? So it's someone who can, who knows the way, goes the way, shows the way, John Maxwell, right? Being able to understand where someone is coming from and say, okay, how can we get around that? How can I help you? How can I support you in that? Because we are in network marketing, in industry of independent business owners. It's a volunteer army. You can't tell anyone to do anything, right? Unless you are lucky enough to get a Jenny Bellinger on, on your team who says, okay, what do I do? Or and then they go and do it. Right. Or Scott Aaron, right? Who says, okay, what do I need to do? Okay. And then they go and do it and come back and go, all right, now what? <laughs> right? Those, those people are few and far between. Um, and so being able to find those people and learn how to lead those people is really, really important. And, you know, a lot of people who get into this business don't realize that leadership is, is how you make the money, Right. The, the money you make from the parties or the money that you make from the, the individual sales is minimal compared to what you can make when you can teach others how to lead as well. Being able to say, okay, I showed you how to do it. Now you're going to go show somebody else how to do it. So right? we, talk, and, well, we, we talked about in the pre-show mm -hmm. that you and I are both students of the game, both in, in building businesses and now coaching other people to do so. And we both, you know, we spoke about in the pre-show about how retention is at its lowest. Attrition is at its highest. Uh, people are in and out of this industry quicker than ever before. Why? <laughs> because they assume that's a business in a box. Open the box and it's a business. And this business is just like any other business. It really honestly is. And I've been saying that for years. And people, when they come into it, they're thinking, well, I'm just going to do this for fun or it's my side hustle or it's my, it's my side gig or whatever. And they're not treating it like a business. They're not going out and doing the things that somebody who is in um, a more traditional business, whether it's a real estate agent, insurance person, banking, it doesn't matter, right? They're not going out and networking. They're not going out and, and taking workshops and seminars and, and trying to figure out how to treat this like a business. And unfortunately, many of their leaders are doing the same thing. They're, they're saying, well, just go post on Facebook. That's all I do. Well, that's not all you do, right? It's, it, there's so much more to it and they're not p allowing people to peel back the curtain and see all the hard work that they do to get there, unfortunately. And so I think, it, you know, a lot of people are relying on social media, which is not a way to build a business. There, it, I mean, Tupperware and Mary Kay and Avon and Park Lane Jewelry and how many other companies were around before social media was a thing? For years, decades, not just years, but decades before social media was a thing. 
and people built businesses that way. So I work with my clients and saying, look, anything you do on social media should be icing on the cake. Your cake is the business that you run the old fashioned way. Talking to people, going out and meeting new people, that's what a real estate agent has to do. That's what you need to do. Be out there and talking with people, be visible. If you sit in your house all day, guess what? Shocker, you're not gonna get sales. You're not gonna meet new people to join your team. Because if you're a recluse, how are you going to meet people? It's just not possible. So, you know, working your business like the old fashioned way. Oh my God. Okay, everybody, I don't know if you have this on video, but this is called a phone. And you know what? Once upon a time, it didn't used to have the internet on it. You just picked it up and called people. Jenny, well, I, I, I do the same thing on my trainings. I'm like, this is called a cellular device and there's numbers <laughs> on it and if you push them in a sequence mm -hmm. someone else can actually talk to you on the other line yes exactly and so it, you know i talk with them about the, the the 500 pound phone phenomenon the first time you pick it up to make that phone call it feels like it's 500 pounds and you're terrified that you're going to die under the weight of the 500 pound phone but guess what? The next time you pick it up, it only weighs 450 pounds. Mm -hmm. And the next time you pick it up, it's only 350 pounds. And every time you do it, it gets easier and easier and easier so that you can actually have conversations and connect with people for real. Because sales is a relationship business, right? Sales is literally can only be done when people are connected. You... People don't buy jewelry. They don't buy health products. They don't buy candles or kitchen whatevers. What they're doing is they're, when they, when they decide to spend money with you, they're spending money with you, with you, Scott Aaron, with me, Jenny Bellinger. They're spending money with the human being who says this product does X, Y, and Z. And not only that, I can teach you how to use it in a way that does this, this, and this, right? It's, they're buying you. They're buying the opportunity to have access to you to teach them how to do that thing, whatever it is. And so if you're not building relationships with people by actually picking up the phone and calling them, if you're not building relationships by going out and being in the business world, teaching people who you are, what you do, and being able to find out, okay, now who are you and what do you do? Because I know I'm not going to solve everybody's problems, but there are a whole bunch of other businesses out there who solve other problems. So if I can begin to say, well, hey, I don't solve your problem. Your biggest problem right now is not what I solve, but I know this other person who can solve that problem for you. When you become the go-to person because you're out networking with other businesses, when you treat your business like a business, when you go out and present yourself as a business owner and begin to do the things that other business owners do, all of a sudden your business grows. It's amazing. I've seen it happen. <laughs> so that brings me to my next question. And this is such great information because a lot of the listeners that I have on here, they're struggling. They, mm. They're floundering in their business or their business. I, I spoke to a woman today who just a year ago was making about $6,000 a month. And wow. people quit and she's now making about 1000 Wow, that's a big downturn. And she's dejected. So because network marketing is a business and I, and I'm sorry, it is. And, it is. And, and a lot of people say, well, it's an opportunity. Well, it's an opportunity as well, but you know, it's your business and how you treat that business is how that business is going to pay you. So if you were to give people three tips or pieces of advice of the best ways to treat their network marketing business, which is an invisible business. You can't see network marketing. Nope. You can see your products, you can see your back office, but there's no, there's no door to your brick and mortar that you're you know, putting in. There's no school that you're going into to teach. Right. It's, it's invisible. Right. What are three tips that you can give those people of how they can start treating this like a business 
today? Well, first things first is know what your top, what your top product is. Okay. So any guesses what that top product just might be? Because it's true for every network marketer out there. The compensation plan. Their top product is the business, right? That's why you lead with the business. Talk about that first when you're talking to people. It's your number one thing you have to sell, right? Now, does that mean you bring everybody in? No, you're not offering it to everybody because if you offer it to everybody, guess what? You get everybody, including the people who don't do squat, mm. who frustrate you and make you not want to do it. Talking about the business and offering it to people are two very different things. Yeah. So number one, know your top product. Talk about it. Lead with the business. Secondly, become an expert. Become an expert. Whether that means become an expert on the product, on the company, on the compensation plan, how do you bring people in? right? Because until you feel comfortable knowing what that process is, what do you need to do in order to help somebody begin their business? And how do you want to handle it? How does the company support you with it? How do you want to handle it? How does your leader handle it? Become an expert. You've got to do that. So know your top product, become an expert, and be a student all the time. This means go to the trainings offered by your team leader. Go to the conferences. Almost every network com uh, company out there right now has training online. And yet I bet if we were to go ask every company IT guy, hey, how many people actually watch this? They could tell us it's probably less than 5% of their company people who are actually utilizing the, the trainings that they have available on your back office. Um, but then not only using the trainings there, but going out and seeking out books, videos, TED Talks about different things like sales, community building, how to, how to be a leader, right? Go read those books. And if you can't afford to go buy a book, guess what? They have these things in almost every town where there are hundreds of thousands of books and they're free, totally free. It's called a library <laughs> and you can get those books. And not only that, but many, many libraries now are totally digital and you can, you can connect to them through your Kindle and download those books for free to your phone. Remember that thing that you pick up and call people with? You can also use it to learn. So be a student, know your top product, be an expert, be a student. What do you think, and I love those tips, I love like tangible takeaways, and, but, but also, you know, the, the podcast is called Network Marketing Made Simple, so we, we like to keep things simple, like picking up a phone and going to a library. That's, that's very, very oh simple. Oh my God, right? I know, I know. Like mic drop, <laughs> like I've never heard that before. It's mind-blowing. <laughs> yeah. But sometimes you need to go back to the basics to really you know, solidify the, the infrastructure of what you're looking to build. So, mm -hmm. you know, we, we, you and I have had some candid conversations over the last few months and we see eye to eye on so many different things. With the industry obviously going the way that it's going and, and there's ebbs and flows in every profession. It's a mm -hmm. roller coaster and, you know, we know that, you know, network marketing, it, it's not that it's taken a hit, but there's new companies opening up every single day, CBD this, shakes that, oils this, travel that, you know, credit card, like so many things. And there's been a little bit of a downturn because there's a, a lot of competition. So there are a lot of people are going in a lot of different directions. Mm -hmm. What do you think industry-wide, not, we're not talking about leaders or, or companies or compensation, but industry-wide, what do you feel personally needs to change in the next one to three years to start to turn it back up to where it was say five or six years ago? Um, I think it's really going to have to be having companies that really understand number one, who to look for, how to onboard, right? Because it, that's really the key to a successful team is having great team members, right? So I think going through that process, because 
it's amazing to me when I talk to some of my clients who are with companies, whether they're new or not, their company, I've got clients who are with companies that are 10, 15 years old now. You would think by now that they had an onboarding prob uh, program. No, they have an onboarding problem, right? They don't know how to bring people in and help them understand that mindset that this is your business. Talk about it like a business, right? So I think that that's the key. And a, a lot of what I'm starting to see happen with a lot of my clients is they're finally starting to say, you know, hey, our company says that, you know, we don't have to post on Facebook as much. Or so I think starting to understand getting away from social media as a basis for a business. Let's go back to what worked in 1965. Let's go back to what worked in 1985. Let's go back to what worked in 1995 before the internet was prevalent and everybody had it in their home. Let's do what worked back then because people are still people. We still crave connection. We're coming out of, and I, oh, I can't remember who said it, maybe Seth Godin said, we're coming out of the, in, the information age and going into the age of connection. Because people, even though we have so much information, we, you know, as you mentioned, we have so many companies popping up. People feel overwhelmed by all the information, by all the opportunities. And so a lot of people just stand still and do nothing because they're like, I don't know which way to go, right? But people are craving connection. So if you can begin to really be a connector and connect with others, then that's really going to make a big difference in your own business. And then when people ask you what you did, say, I was a human being. <laughs> I, I made it my business to connect. I talk about all the time that it's not about B2C or B2C, B2B or B2C. It's called H to H, human to human. Yeah. And if people follow me on, on LinkedIn, it says human connection expert because I, I use social media as a means to get people on the phone so I can create a connection with them, so I can create rapport and trust. And I'm going to encourage every single one of you that's listening to this, make it a point to go to some sort of meetup or mm. networking group just once a week. You don't have to do it every day. Just oh. once a week, get in the company of other human beings that you don't know. And what I can tell you is that when you can put yourself in the situation where you're meeting new people and you're rubbing shoulders with other human beings, part of the reason why I invested last year in a mastermind is because of the experience of it. Mm -hmm. Going out to California for three three day weekends, four four three day weekends, four, three or four four day weekends. But spending all that time with now my my friends that are now my family, creating those bonds and those relationships, and doing pod swaps and Facebook lives and networking together. There is no better feeling than human interaction, and I crave it all the time. And you know, Nancy mm -hmm. and I are blessed to be able to work from home where we can network with each other, but. We love being around people. We love getting out there. And, you know, you, you see, you know, leadership. When you're a leader, you know, with, with great, with leadership, with great power comes great responsibility. I mm. love that quote. It's from Spider-Man. And I yeah. love it because it's the truth. And, and just like you said very early on in this interview, we can't control who brings us in. Mm-mm but we can control who we're led by. Amen. And sometimes it may not be the person that brought us in. It may be a Jenny Bellinger. Mm -hmm. It may be a Scott. And that's why, see, people ask me all the time, and I'm sure they ask you this, why are you coaching now? <laughs> You're not building anymore, you coaching. Well, mm -hmm. the simplest way to answer that question is, I love coaching. Mm -hmm. I've been doing it since I was 18. I've been doing it for 23 years. I've been doing it for more than half my life. But number two, I know that what I bring 
is what a lot of people are craving. Yeah. And it's what a lot of people need. And just like you said, I want to be there to support them. I mm -hmm. want to be there to give them the confidence that's already inside of them, but just so it just needs to be brought to the surface a little bit more where they can take the tools, they can have that confidence, they can have that posture, and they can run. And you and I both know, no matter what the company is, no matter what the product you're selling, no matter how the compensation plan is set up, those that truly build a team, an organization that has a system and there's tools and there's duplication, that's how you can build a deep downline mm -hmm. that causes the money to flow up back to you. Yep. But Jenny, my question to you is this. Why do you feel, in knowing what you know from both sides of the coin, the coin of building and the coin of coaching, you, you've been on both of it just like I have. Mm -hmm. Why do you feel most people are not succeeding right now in network marketing? Two things. First of all, fear. They're scared to get it wrong or they're scared to be seen as that pushy, naggy person or whatever, right? Fear. So it's better to do nothing or just do a little something that feels safe or comfortable for them than stepping outside of their comfort zone and doing something differently, whatever that may be. Um, I think the second thing is not understanding um, the abundance that's out there. You know, there, you don't have to sell to everybody. You just got to find the, find the people who really need what you have, whether it's the business or the product, either or and or both, right? Because if you want to build a great business, you, you've got to have some sort of semblance of balance between sales and team building, right? So because those sales oftentimes lead you to your next great team member. Because they are trying things out. They're watching you to see what's going on. And then they go, okay, let's do this, right? The, your best customers will many times flip into one of your greatest team members. And they were just testing you out to see. So having some semblance of a, a balance, and I, and I say that because I don't truly believe balance truly exists. You're going to have months where you're going to recruit and lead and, and do team building like crazy and your personal sales are going to drop some. But then the next month you're going to be like, okay, now my focus, on, it, focus is on building sales. And so it, there's going to be ups and downs and ebbs and flows as we mentioned. But as long as you're continuing to keep working on both aspects of that part of your business, you're going to be successful. Um, it, but I think for people who aren't succeeding, it's because they're scared and they don't, they, they, they only see what's around them without realizing how much more is outside of that circle. And something else that we were talking about in the pre-show was the more you invest, the more that you get back. And it's something that I actually learned and I'm, I'm grateful for this. My, my enrolling sponsor told me literally within 60 days, he said, you're going to need to hire a coach. And I said, what do you mean I'm going to need to hire a coach? There's, there's tools and resources that the company provides. He goes, yes, and they're great. But you need to learn from some that already did it that, are, that know more. You have, mm -hmm. to, you have to invest into this business just like you would anything else. And I went to this event, and I was driving up with him. And he turned to me and he said, you're going to hire this guy today. <laughs> I said, what, what do you mean I'm going to hire this guy today? He said, during the break, you're going to go to his decision table and he's going to ask for your credit card and you're going to give it to him. <laughs> he's coached a lot of successful people to earn six and seven figures. And if you want to do that, you're going to want to work with him. He goes, I can teach you the basics and I can support you and I can give you all the tools of what I know, but what I know I'm learning from him. So success leaves clues. So amen. I go to this event and during the lunch break, I go over to his decision table and he says, are you going to hire me today? And I said, yes. Now 
I had never spent $2,500 on anything, Mm -hmm. let alone hiring an individual for that. But what I can tell you, even though I was scared to death, I was sweating, it was a very uncomfortable thing to do. Mm -hmm. That was one of my first experiences in network marketing where I learned the power of being uncomfortable. Because when you lean into that fear, you know, just like I did that training for your team and I said, what happens if you lean back in your boots, you fall on your butt. But if you lean into the fear, that's when the magic happens. And, and I hired him and my life hasn't been the same since. I've continued to invest back into my business and in onboarding team members and doing masterminds. And every coach has a coach. If, if someone oh, yeah. that you're working with, you know, I'm a part of groups and I have a couple people that I'm working with. You have a couple people that you're working with. When, when you work with someone that's not investing back in themselves and they think they know everything, they actually know nothing. But mm-hmm. Jenny, here's the, 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 the big thing that I want you to get across because there are people that are going to listen to this and they're like, well, my upline's a millionaire. You know, they're, they make multiple six figures. I'm just following what they do, but my income's not matching it. So I must be doing something right, right? <laughs> And no, no network marketing company is going to get up there and say, hey, listen, guys, we got great tools, but go, go seek out and hire a business coach too. Like they're just, that's never going to happen. Right. Well, there's the potential, but it, it would be a really forward thinking company. <laughs> exactly. Because that would require people to have to quote unquote, spend more money. So mm-hmm. knowing what you know now and all the clients that you've worked with, that I've worked with, what's your message to those individuals that have been sitting on the fence? with the potential of working with a business coach or joining Mm -hmm. a mastermind because they're not seeing network marketing as an entrepreneurial endeavor. They're seeing it as as network marketing, but it is an entrepreneurial endeavor and it Mm -hmm. can be applied to anything. So, so speak to those people that are sitting on the fence right now about investing extra money, additional money outside of what their company already provides. So if not this coach, or this program, or this system, whatever it is that they're looking at at working with, if not this, what? Because what you're doing will only take you so far. You need to have something to push you harder, because I'm telling you right now, there are very few leaders in network marketing who know how to coach in a way that actually supports and brings you along and holds you accountable in a loving way. The people who do accountability and say, oh yeah, they're great at accountability. Well, yeah, because they call you at Friday at 5.01 when you said you would get something done at Friday at five o'clock, right? And they hold you accountable after the deadline. Well, is that the right way to do it? So if you're not going to hire this coach or use the system, what are you going to do instead? And if you don't have an answer for that, then it's time to invest. It's time to say, okay, you know what? I'm going to go without Starbucks for a few months because you know, this is going to be worth it. The, the learning, the growth, it's going to be uncomfortable. It's going to be painful, but guess what? We, we, we go through the greatest growth from the greatest pain. Ooh, I love, say that one more time. We go through our greatest growth when we go through our great pain, mm. which you as a former fitness person, you get that. Yeah. It's how you <laughs> no tear pain, muscles no gain, down right? and build them up. Right. The same is true for yourself and for your business. If you're not willing to push and do something uncomfortable that's slightly painful and maybe feels weird or, God, why am I doing this? You know what? There's a reason why they're having you do X, Y, or Z. And it's because they know that it's going to push you in one direction or another that's going to introduce you to the thing, the person, the idea that you need in that moment. And my simple message to piggyback off of Jenny is if you're willing to do nothing, how can you expect something to change? Yeah. A year from now. nothing changes, nothing changes. <laughs> a, a year from now, if you're not going to invest in something else to learn something new, a year from now, I can guarantee you, your business will be exactly the same place that it is right now. Because mm-hmm. wherever your business is, wherever your business isn't, it is in direct correlation to the work that you are or are not doing. 
So if you want something to change, you have to change something that you're doing. Absolutely. So, so Jenny, obviously you have some amazing programs out there. You have some amazing communities that you're building out there. So talk a little bit to the audience that isn't familiar with any of that, how you help people, how they can connect to you, where they can become a part of you, your coaching and the communities that you've curated and created. Certainly. So uh, as you heard earlier, I am better known as the direct sales dom because I am the host of the Badass Direct Sales Mastery Podcast, which if you haven't written it down yet, it's BDSM, Badass Direct Sales Mastery Podcast. So I'm the direct sales dom and I help people whip their business into shape. So I I have private coaching programs, group coaching programs, small group coaching programs. So almost mastermind like, um, but of course, instead of, you know, but it's guided by a coach, right? Somebody who's been down that road before who can help show and help make the connections. But the great thing about the group coaching, oh God, I love it so much, is that I don't have to always know the answers. You know, it's really cool because oftentimes someone else in the group knows the answer and says, hey, I, I had that problem and I did this. And it's phenomenal. So if people would like to reach out to me, they can find me on Facebook. Um, it, badass direct sales mastery. You can't miss me. I'm in the purple corset. Purple's kind of my thing, you know. Uh, and I also have, of course, my LinkedIn. You can find me Jenny Bellinger, J-E-N-N-I-E, Jenny Bellinger uh, on LinkedIn and connect with me there as well. Awesome. So Final question and all that information, guys, is going to be in the show notes Mm -hmm. and wherever you're listening to this from, take a screenshot, post it on social media, whether it's Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, share your takeaways with us. We would love to hear back from you. So Jenny, final question before we sign off, there's no wrong answer because it's what it means to you. What does success truly mean to you? Ooh, boy, that's a loaded question. Um, Success for me feels like I can go to bed at the end of the day knowing that I have made progress in my business, that I've helped my clients make progress in their business. I love it. Love it. That's, That's success for me. Oh, and don't forget, I am a mom. So it's also getting to have time with my kids because I'm getting the success that I want as well. That's great. And that's, you know, being a, being a parent is a, a wonderful thing and being available and, mm-hmm. you know, and, and I, I can, I can attest to that, you know, being able to pick up my son from school, dropping him off in the morning where, you know, I have the ability to do that because I don't need to be on a call or I don't need to drive to work. It's, it's a, it's a very freeing and uh, empowering mm. feeling to have it that everyone deserves. And, and they will if they, if they choose to. And, and that's, that's what life is. It's choice. It's about deciding, committing, and taking action around that. And Jenny, I just want to thank you again for coming on here today and blessing my audience with all of your knowledge and your inspiration, but doing it in a very lovingly way because I, you know, I'm not surprised how successful you are because the more that you give, the more that you get. Uh, and you are that person. So, so I'm personally grateful for you and your friendship, but thank you so much for being here today. Oh, thank you, Scott. It's, it's wonderful to get to, to do this because I know that each time I get to do this, there's more people who are going to be impacted, who are going to hear something, learn something. And that's, that's my personal mission is to make positive impact in the direct sales world so that we can make it so that when people hear about their friend, their sister, their whatever, just joined or just joined a company, right? I I just joined whatever company or I just started a business with people don't roll their eyes. I want people to be excited for them um, instead of going, you know, that's my personal mission. Change how the rest of the world sees direct sales. So it's not this icky, yucky, like, oh God thing. It's not a pyramid or Ponzi. It's a legitimate business if you treat it like one. Amen to that. I love that. So guys, thank you again for listening. Please share your takeaways on social with us. So please enjoy the rest of your day and I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.
Thank you again so much for checking out this week's episode. And if you can, head over to iTunes, search for Network Marketing Made Simple, leave me a five-star rating, basic review. I would be grateful for all of the support you guys can give me. And again, if you'd be interested in learning more how to utilize LinkedIn to grow your business, your brand, and your bank account, head over to my website, www.scotterron.net. Fill out the form for your free 15-minute discovery call so I can learn more about you, your business, and how we can work together. And again, thank you guys so much. Grateful for you all, and I'll see you next time.